Hey everyone, uh, today's video we're going to be looking at uh, grids, we're going to be looking at sorting with both a, a code solution and a no code solution and that will also mean looking at the online package manager. So imagine we've got our program that does everything the user wants, it's, um, it looks good, it responds if the user changes the size of the form, uh, we can do fines, etc. But now the user asks us, hey, I want to be able to sort my rows by clicking on a column heading. And how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways that um, this particular problem can be solved. And as I said, there is a solution by writing some code. And then there is also a solution which involves virtually no code except you've got to download a component. So we're going to have a quick look at the first one, which is writing a bit of code. And then we're going to go through the uh, no code option, which like I said, just involves using the online package manager to install that component. Now, first of all, though, on the grid reference page, um, which uh, we'll put into the links uh, in, a, un in the video description, there are some um, examples of how to use DB grids. For example, how to use the memo field or how to use memo fields. Uh, how to sort columns in rows by clicking on a column heading, which is what we're talking about here. Uh, selecting records, and then they've also got here an example of how to export a DB grid to a text file. In my previous video, remember though, um, we used a CVS exporter class and the code there is that much and if we were to go down to the very bottom here this here is the code or similar code that you would have to um, export a grid to a text file I'm um, not quite sure whether uh, what sort of com uh, <coughs> column separator is being used it doesn't matter really because what I'm trying to show you here is you've got all of this code here uh, versus, let's say, this bit of code here. So, for me, in in you know certain functionality or certain functions, you know, it's a case of don't reinvent the wheel. If it exists, you may you know you can. If it exists in what you've got, then use it. If you can um, add it or add something third party without it having a significant um, impact on your program then you can then I would use it as well um, but anyway so we're talking about sorting now so how do we uh, sort by clicking on a column heading when it comes to code there could be two ways we could do that the first way would be to when we click on a column heading and that would mean taking over um, a grid title click, so you're told what column is being uh, clicked upon here. And what you can do there would be a um, to, let's say, modify the query by adding in an order by um, the column field name, you know, and then depending upon whether it's, you know, um, has been used or not, you know, adding the word ascending or descending into that SQL. That's option one. Option two is the code you're seeing here. And here we're looking at using indexes or adding an index here specifically. Um, and we're telling it whether or not we're going to be, you know, ascending, descending, etc. And in this case here also, uh, it's also including a, an up arrow and a down arrow here to uh, show you the direction that the column or how to show you the direction in which the values are being sorted. A uh, function that I am more interested in is this dbx controller and uh, once it's installed it becomes part of the data controls um, group and it gives you a whole bunch more functionality than you can poke a stick at. So you've got searching, uh, filtering, um, you can sort by multiple columns, you can, um, uh, what else can we do here? 
it's best if you see this um, images below here because basically you've got all these functions here where uh, you've got a global search here you can sort by or sort by multiple columns if you want to um, and you've also got this filtering here like similar to what you would see in the Microsoft Excel type product so I'm not going to go through everything that it can do uh, because what we're going to do is throw it into our vehicle lookup program and see what happens. Now to do this, um, we will need to use the online package manager. Now, if you are a little bit stupid like me sometimes, um, I forgot, I use the um, FP, UP Deluxe um, program to um, install build my Lazarus environment and the last time I forgot to uh, add in the um, online package manager so um, make sure you if you're using that program make sure you add it on because once you do that then under the package menu at the very bottom here now I've got my online package manager and <clears throat> it goes away sees what's available and then appears now <clears throat> what you can do so we're going to have a little look at this program here uh, or this functionality but it also had this own wiki page which we're going to make a copy of so uh, we'll put that into the links below as well and here um, you can see everything you want them to do Typically, you would use it mainly for uh, installing packages, but it does more than just that because you can uh, filter by package categories, you can um, update, you can get an update to a package, uh, you can create, uh, what's this one here, you can create a repository package, uh, just about everything you might want to do, you know, except clean your sink. So, uh, we were going to look for then a particular package which is basically uh, well in this case here let's see whether we can do filter by I wonder if this I wonder if this one is the one I'm looking for DB grid controller the other thing also I'll point out here is that um, if you have that you know when you open up an item here and you go into the package information uh, if you can see like a, a home page and it has a link on it um, it will take you there and in this case here yep we are on the right one definitely so this is the particular package here that we want to get so if you do want to um, in so if you want to then be able to install this package just click on the checkbox next to the name and then down the bottom here you will see you know the buttons become enabled now so you can either a just download it install it or if it is installed you could uninstall it um, and then there are also options and I'm not going to worry about the options just yet because I want to install it and it says that the following package are not tested and might fail do you want to continue anyway of course we do let's see what happens hey what, what what's the worst that could happen here so it's now downloading um, it says it was successful installing was successful do I want to rebuild Lazarus with okay so um, so Lazarus has now just um, re been rebuilt and we can go across to our data controls and now we can see what do we see now okay uh, we've got a grid controller there and okay just a date time picker so what we're going to do here I'm just going to resize my window a bit to make life easier we're going to uh, just make this window a bit bigger and now what we'll do is add in this controller Uh, now how do we use this one um, we've got to point at a grid somehow how does it know what the grid is it 
maybe I need to look at some help here. I wonder if we can actually build a program without using it because looking at this here or looking at the help page that I'm, I don't seem to have a DB grid uh, property here. So either A, it just knows where it is or B, nope, it doesn't know where it is. Okay, so let's go into uh, this particular unit here and see how we can work out what the grid is. Okay, that's a private member. It is a property. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do here in my first, without um, doing any updates from other locations, because remember that it said um, that it wasn't tested. So we're going to go into a uh, form show and I'm going to see what happens if we were to uh, I'm just setting a bookmark for the moment let's go to that one oh, it is right down the bottom anyway um, DB grid equals I can't remember what I call it let's see what happens here It's a bit hard to see, but it's actually been added in now. Although, and I do have a funny looking line. Now it's gone. No data found. That's interesting. Okay. What I might do also is I'm going to change my um, theme here. Gonna make it light. Oh, geez, that looks horrid, doesn't it? Uh, let's go back to there. Close that down. Okay. Oh, now we've got a seg fault. Uh, let's close that down. Stop debugging. Stop the debugging. Go back to there. Go into here. And let's just run it again. Okay, so here now you can actually see the, um, it's probably a bit easier to see. So we'd have these options across the top here. We can do a search like 777. But the other thing you'll note here does also automatically add in without any code, like I said, the, you know, the ability to go uh, first or the first record prior record next and last so would it removes the need for this grid here the refresh is also take is not needed anymore so we could remove the uh, navigator component now let's see whether closing the program will cause a problem can we close the program it's not responding hey let's just wait okay so we are getting, we do have a problem I'm thinking with our grid component and where is that coming from? Okay, it is coming, it is associated with the grid. Um,
Okay, so I wonder if now we're we're going to go a little bit further into using the let's let's just break out of that altogether and we're going to go into the online package manager we're going to go to that one select it and see if it's it, can we update that somehow let's go and what we may as well i wonder what their latest download no uh, we want to go to this one here okay here we go um, i've placed and found in a frame when the form is closed an exception occurred there close enough wonder did that copy okay let's quit out of there um, so look I think what we might do is call this end of part one and what we'll do I'm going to have a look at this particular component and see what's needed to get it working with the um, latest version of Lazarus um, free Pascal as well um, and come back with a follow-up video and maybe um, this is also could be seen as a uh, as a learning exercise in terms of sometimes the component that you'd like to use doesn't work as intended. So what do you do? Um, but uh, stay tuned. This is the end of part one. Uh, part two will be uh, or getting it working so I can use it with this bit so we don't get a crash when it ends and. Hey, so a quick part two to this video here. Um, basically, I'm just gonna stick this onto myself. Um, so first of all, uh, to get around the problem with the DB grid and the um, error on program exiting, what I found I had to do was to, and I don't necessarily think I need to do this, but we are. Uh, if we set the DB grid of the controller to nil when the program closes, uh, then that gets around that particular error. So that was number one. Uh, number two is that we were getting the issue with the maximum number of indexes. And to get around that one in, the, in, in my query, I set the maximum number of indexes to 48. Uh, I just picked an arbitrary number to be honest and now when we run the program okay we'll just make that a bit bigger now still got, I, I'd like to know why that ugly line appears but hey um, don't really care right now but uh, now we can click on this to our hearts content and we can see the uh, the column is sorted and now when we quit the program, we don't get any error like we were before. So, hey, I'm happy as I can be. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then and bye.